So now we're going to do a bit more on functions. Now make sure you watch the three main ways to draw a parabola video first, because that will really help. And now you're going to learn how to draw any basic function. All right, so a list of functions. This is y equals x, seen that one before. This is y equals x to the power of half. We will go over that one. y equals x squared. Hopefully we're familiar with that. y equals x cubed, which we will go over later as well. y equals x to the power of negative 1. And y equals x to the power of negative 2. So these are all just basic shapes. Just think of them as shapes for the time being, and they all sort of work around the same formula. So a quick parabola review. If you've got the intercept form, you draw it like this. If you've got a turning point form, we know that the turning point is going to be BH. Even though the B is negative, we actually make that a positive, so it's going to be BH. So this works with every other function. So if you've got y equals x cubed, like this one, and you want to change it into y minus 2 cubed plus 1, well, all you have to do is plus 2 on the x-axis and plus 1 on the y-axis. Put in the turning point, um, and then there you go. Same deal with this one. This is y equals x to the negative 1. But if you have it in this form, where you've got negative 2 on the x, it means you move it 2 over, and then plus 2 means you move it 2 up as well. And then you just put in that little turning point form type thing, where it originally started. And this thing has uh, asymptotes as well, which we'll go into later. Same deal with this bad boy. Um, Say so I wanted to move it negative, uh, I wanted to move it b. So that would be a b amount, and that would be a c amount. So whatever it is, that point would be bc. So a quick note about square root hyperbola, and truncus. So this is a square root function. Um, you can also see it as um, x square root of x as well as x to the power of half. And it looks like half a parabola turned on its side. It really does, doesn't it? This is a hyperbola. Hyper comes from the Greek meaning above, and hopefully you remember from parabola that bola means to throw. So it literally means to throw above. And just to help you remember it, I've created a brand new superhero, the Hyperbola. This guy can throw stuff straight, and it goes straight up or straight down, depending on his mood. Let's see what happens now. Oh, straight up, boom. But you can also see down here, sometimes he throws it straight, and it goes straight down. So that's maybe a way you can remember it. So Hyperbola have asymptotes. That's these red line thingies. And asymptotes means lines that the curve comes close to, but doesn't touch. And you can see it sort of comes closer and closer and closer, but never actually touches them. And it does that all along these four different directions. This is a truncus. You can probably guess why it's called that. And this thing also has asymptotes as well. And a quick note about powers. So if you've got x to the power of negative 1, that just means 1 on x, right? If you've got x to the power of negative 2, that means 1 on x squared. And if you've got x to the power of half, that equals the square root of x. I will go into this a little bit later in the power section, but for the time being, if you can just sort of get this, you'll be chill. So if we look at something like this, y equals x minus b to the power of negative 1 plus c, it can also be written like this, because what's happened is we've got this thing down here, and we've just sort of chucked it down the bottom. Right? Very similar to if you got um, x to the negative 1, it would be 1 on x. And so it would be drawn in exactly the same way. Uh, b moved over to the right, this way, by b, and up by c. Hence that this is bc, right here. So the same deal with this, can be written like that, and it moves in exactly the same way. And this thing as well can be written like this. So the half actually creates a little square root thingy here. And again, it just it, it all moves in the same way. It's been moved over by B and up by C. That's it. So patterns in functions. Now you might notice these. When X has an even power, it tends to have this sort of shape. But as the power gets higher, so this is x squared, this is x to the power 4, this is x to the power 8, and this is x to the power 34, you can see it just gets squarer and squarer. But if it's to an even power, we know it's always going to be this sort of shape, that sort of thing. When x has an odd power, 
Well, it starts off as x to the power one, then we've got x cubed, but from here, again, it just gets squarer and squarer. So again, it's always gonna be in this sort of shape where it's going from low to high. And you can basically, if you've got any uh, powers which are odd, you know it's gonna be that sort of shape and they're not gonna give you anything ridiculous like this anyway. So drawing any basic function. So first of all, you need to know what the basic function looks like, which is why I showed you all those graphs to begin with, all those different types of graphs, because if you get what that looks like, moving them around is just simple. So we've got this one and it's to the power of negative two. So we know it's gonna be a truncus. Then we need to see if there are any numbers added only to the x and there are, there's a two. So that means it's moved negative two on the x-axis. Remember when it's next to the x, it's opposite. See if there's any numbers added to the entire function and there is right here, this is added to the entire function, if you can sort of understand that. It means it moves negative one on the y-axis. So all we have to do is get this original function up here and move it by negative two, negative one. And there it is, same thing, just moved over a little bit. That's it. I hope this helps you with drawing basic functions.